Okay guys, this one will sum it up for oh My ZSH. We'll take a look at the final PK10 configure. We'll walk through why and how we can fix the icons and things like that and just choosing the appropriate font. And we'll walk you through the prompt style and the configurations. We'll also take a look at OMZ update and we will sure up the configurations for Visual Studio's code so you can get the same results. Once again, guys, be sure to stick around for the entirety of the video as I give most of my insights towards the end of the lesson. All right, with that being said, let's jump in. And this is up to you, so do pay attention to these instructions because depending on what you choose is what your terminal will look like. So in my case, the question is, does this look like a diamond? I'm gonna say yes. So does this look like a lock? No. So now I'm gonna choose the prompt style. So there's lean, classic, rainbow, or pure. For now, I'm gonna take one, I'm gonna say lean. And then you gotta choose your character set. So in this case, I'm gonna choose Unicode. I'm gonna say one, and I'm gonna say one here. And then I like my format in the 12 hour format. So I'm gonna say three. And then I would like my prompt height on one line. And you can choose whether you want compact, sparse, or otherwise, I'm gonna say compact. The prompt flow, I'm gonna choose just concise. You could choose fluent if you like. And this is like enable transient prompt. So enable transient prompt, I'm gonna choose yes. This is actually interesting towards the end here. There's a thing called the prompt documentation, and I'm just gonna copy this for now. I'm gonna paste this inside here. So this is the read that you'll have to do. So you have to understand what transient prompt is doing, and it makes it easier for copying and pasting commands from terminal where you scroll back. There's a bunch of different things. So once you understand this and you gave it a read and you wanna pick the settings that you decide is useful for you, you can go back here and choose the appropriate option. So in my case, I'm gonna choose quiet. So, and once again, we can apply the changes. This is kind of like sourcing it. And I'm gonna just say, yes. This is the new configuration. If you don't like the theme, if you don't like the way this looks, if you're like, okay, I'm really not happy with this, you know, um, things are not looking the way I expected, or I wanna try this again. You can just type in uh, P110 configure, okay? And then you go through this process again. So you could pick something else. So this is interesting. Notice how none of these things are actually looking like the actual, uh, you know, items that they're asking. I'm gonna go through this again and I'm gonna show you guys how to correct that because it has to do with the font. So for now, I'm just gonna say, yes, these things look like the way they look, but they actually don't. So if the icons are very close, we'll say these icons are overlapping. I'll choose three for rainbow. I'll choose two for ASCII, three for 12 hour format. I will choose one line. I will choose two for sparse. I will choose two for fluent. And in this case, I'll say yes. And this time around, I will choose one. And then we'll say yes. Now there's a new config file. Because we've modified this or made different changes to the power level 10K file, we now have this additional config file that we can reach out to. So if I use code and I open up that config file, I will see that we now have our own way of customizing or configuring you know, power level 10K. Let's fix the issue around why we can't see the actual fonts that they're asking us. And in this case, we're gonna quit and do nothing. And we will close this file. And we'll work on fixing that issue. Hey guys, what's up? Kevin here. I just want to give a big shout out to my subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Be sure to give the videos a like, a thumbs up, and start a conversation. Much appreciated. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's fix this font issue. So let's go to our browser. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, sometimes you can use like, you know, uh, nerd fonts, source code, or font awesome or power line. If the fonts aren't working out for you guys, we could just do a manual installation. Just manually download these ones. So just click on each one of them and we'll download them and then just add them to your fonts directory. You'll have to look it up and I believe it's called font book. So once font book is open, it's as easy as just dragging all of these right into your user fonts and then it should be available. Once that's done, then you need to go back to terminal. We we'll go to preferences and we'll change our font and we're gonna jump down to this one, Meslo LGS NF, and we're gonna exit terminal, and we're gonna reopen terminal, and we're gonna run the configuration process one more time. That'll be PK10 configure. This in turn will change the icons, and instead of getting the question marks, we'll probably get the right icons that we need. Now we'll go through the questions, and we'll see if these icons are the corresponding icons that they should be. So we're gonna say yes, and now we can see that we see the lock, and now we should see the Debian logo, and also we're gonna say yes. We're gonna answer yes here, the icons are close, but they don't overlap. You can pick the appropriate font style. I'm gonna go with lean, and I'm gonna go with number one, and one once again, and this time I'm gonna try two, 
and one for one line. I'm gonna choose compact, and then I'm gonna choose many icons. I'm gonna choose two, two for fluent. I'm gonna say no on this one. And then I'm also gonna choose two for quiet. What it will do is, remember that file that we had that was open? It'll rewrite it. A copy of the file already exists based on what we did before. And now it's gonna overwrite the settings. Yes, it does make a temporary backup of the old file in case you made a mistake. And there you have it. It's a little bit different. And we're just gonna clear this. And I'm getting a git status error. And I wonder if that's because, let's see, we'll check the git plugin and that's actually normal. I think we're getting that error because I'm currently not in a directory that hasn't initialized git. So let me just try something here. I'm gonna cd to projects. I'm just gonna cd into this cookie. And then I'm gonna say git init. I think that may be due to not being in a project or a repository or a folder that has git not initialized. So we'll clear that. And then I'll cd back to my root here. I'm gonna exit and then I'm gonna just fire up terminal one more time. Okay, well, if you guys do get that error, let me know. It may be because once again, that may be the process for Git. You could remove the plugin and then maybe something will change around that. We have this in the title and I've kind of done some things up here that you guys are not familiar with, but that's okay. Uh, what you could do is you just come down to here and uncomment this comment here. So it's disable auto title set to true. This is some of the things I was doing around the colors. It just depends on what you want and what you want to configure. And as you can see now, the machine name has disappeared and it's kind of back to originally what I had minus the icons. And I think that will do for now. So one more thing, I'm gonna type in OMZ and this is the commands that are available. So if you had to update this, like so OMYZSH, you could run like update and that will update it to the latest version. I really do enjoy like the autocomplete. One thing you may have noticed as well is if you add this theme to your terminal, depending on your IDE or whatever you're using, you will also see those changes kind of reflect inside of that terminal as well. Within here, we can open up terminal and you'll see that terminal has also been changed here. I wouldn't panic if you see this. You can simply probably try to go into the settings or preferences of VS Code. And then within here, we can type in terminal. And instead of choosing integrated, you can pick external. But be careful when you do this because it may actually just disable the terminal within the IDE and you know, a lot of people would probably want that to still be there. The other alternative is to go to terminal font and then you have to choose the appropriate font. And in the font family here, you see that we're kind of missing the integrated font. Let's go terminal font and we're gonna add the Maslow LGS NF and it'll give you a little warning here. Terminal only supports monospace fonts. Be sure to restart this and you should see that it replicates what you have here. And depending how that's set up, you may have to adjust the font um, to get the graphics to work correctly and have the icons work for you guys. This is a little bit of an advanced uh, lesson around terminal for theming. And I didn't want to do it in the beginning because it's just, it's really intimidating right off the bat. For those of you who are familiar, this should be easy to pick up. And those of you who are willing to change that or change your theme or customize it, um, this is the process that I use. I also do it via homebrew, but I mean, this was a more of a manual way for you guys to see how it's controlled. Brew will do that as well for you. And you'll have some of the same caveats that you're going to have to adjust. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new, and I'll see you guys later. Yeah.